Baking bread, baking bread, did something, someone, something, something, I'm breaking bread. I don't remember the lyrics. Um, that was from an old video game, Richard Scary's Busy Town, I believe. I haven't played that in a very, very long time. It was an old PC game that we had. And obviously, I'm making bread. That was my idea. I figured... I need to do it anyway. Yep, we're scaled. I might as well turn on a camera and I can do that for the personal vlog instead of playing Minecraft this week. And I'm not gonna tell you the main measurements for here because, well, this has been worked on quite a bit to get to this point. Um, because of the elevation. What am I looking for? There's the salt. I did put, all right, up a water, half of the sugar, and the yeast, and let that sit for about a half an hour. Then I just get my flour. There's the salt. I need the rest of the sugar. Oh, and olive oil. I found a recipe for French bread rolls on whoop tear that F uh king arthur flour and then modified it with their recipe with their instructions because at this height things work differently is that everything I've made it only probably two dozen times. That's not true. Maybe not that many. Bread flour, lukewarm water, sugar, yeast, olive oil, salt. Yep, okay. I've done it more than enough times. I should be able to talk and knead dough at the same time. But again, it won't make much sense if I try to instruct or provide any kind of recipe because I had to modify it, but it did not call for these specific uh, measurements of ingredients. It required something different. And then I looked up again from King Arthur Flower, the uh, exact measurements and how to, what to do for high altitude baking. And this has come together. So anyway, I uh, got all my editing done. To oh, wait. You can probably see. This is the only apron I own. Go ahead and answer that one right out the gate. And there's tape on the front of it because I got it from a company that I was working for. And I don't want to put their logo right on the camera for this entire thing. So I covered it up the best way I could. I only own one apron. I wish I had another one. And I know that it's not going to be very interesting coming from that camera until I actually start kneading. And I don't like to edit these that much. I just like to sync up everything and go. But it would be pretty poor to make that front and center <laughs> during all of the bowl mixing and things, which doesn't <laughs> not interesting to look at at all. So yeah, I started... Uh, making bread when we moved because everything's expensive and I, I mean I'd already I started regularly making bread I should say I'd attempted a few times I'd been making pizza dough and such I think I've talked about that on another episode um, especially working on pizza dough and trying to get it to the point where it was good following recipes and stuff I do really enjoy cooking and baking and things like that I don't get to do it all that often. But making dough has become something that I just thoroughly enjoy. I usually put on headphones and just get to work on kneading it. Which we are about to start. 
sprinkle my flower all over the surface. And that's another thing that has come with time and feel is figuring out exactly how much flour to use and adjusting the recipe because I use a fair amount when I'm kneading, far more than I have seen recommended by professionals. Okie dokie. Get that there and we begin to bring it together. Let's see, let's see. What has happened since the last time I was talking to a camera? Well, technically I was doing it this morning for editing as the editor on the wildlife vlog from Saturday, where I saw quite a few wildlifes. That is the plural. Don't check that. Um, <laughs> but I mostly have just been weekend cleaning and laundry, prepped some meals that I'm going to be able to eat throughout the week and today, but almost out of bread. Hence, what I'm doing now. I started talking about when I started making this bread. I've tried a few different recipes and it definitely took some getting used to the altitude and figuring out how, but it's pretty well come together now to the point where I can consistently make bread that I enjoy and bread that my significant other enjoys and now we don't have to buy as much, which is nice and it lasts a good bit. I probably haven't made bread in a few weeks. So I got up and I did my editing this morning. And then I cleaned the kitchen real well before it was on camera. And because I had to clean it anyway for making dough. There we go, now it's starting to come together. I usually wind up adding, like I said, probably too much flour compared to most recipes, but since I'm doing all this by hand and by feel, I add uh, a little less water on the front end, or a little more water on the front end. Not as much flour. What am I saying? <laughs> I add enough flour to make it come together, but not the full amount for the hydration, and that's why I can add a good bit here. And it's just getting the dough to the point where it is sticky, but not sticking to me. Tacky might be the word. I'm not a professional in any way. No one should be watching this in a way to learn how to make bread. Because <laughs> I'm not doing a good job of explaining anything. I don't really know. And like I said, I've had to adapt this recipe for the altitude. But rather than repeat myself over and over, I got done with the editing um, and cleaned and started the bread and finished cleaning and got everything set up with these lights. I did pick a topic for today. I figured I would be able to talk through this a little bit. How, in, how long? Okay. It's only just now starting to come together. So about 20 minutes of hand kneading. It's about how long it takes before it fully comes together. So I looked up a question for today to talk about. And the question had to do with, the question was like, how close have you come to dying? But I haven't, I don't really do anything that dangerous much. But I could say what's the closest time I've come to danger. That's been a few instances. Um, let's see. Definitely have a few for wildlife related, not wildlife related, but like going out into nature. Um, back when I started, I would go to a forest, big national, not national, um, county. <laughs> I don't know what, what level it was, but it government, government controlled forest, right? 
and I would go take pictures and whatnot and go look for wildlife. And one time I went a little further because I was... I wasn't exactly telling myself that that's what I needed to do, but I wasn't seeing a lot, and I figured the deeper into the woods you go, the better. So I walked alongside the river. Uh, probably walked for an hour. I don't remember how long it was. The thing is that it's, it's a very slow going process because I stopped to take pictures constantly. But I'm walking along and eventually the trail has ended. There wa I was following a trail at one point, but the trail has ended and I'm still going. And I know I'm not too far from things because I have my phone and I have GPS. There's not a signal or anything, so I could not call for help. <laughs> But I could look up uh, a location based, see where I was at, and see how far I was from the main trail, which was a road that you used to be able to drive on and then they closed it. So just horses walk on it. And I hit a point where I cannot go forward anymore. The river bends and you cannot keep walking. It is just too, there's not even like a clearing to walk through or anything. It is just foliage, pure shrubbery, impassable. And at that point, I should have turned around. And I went, well, I'm not entirely done for today. I don't like to turn around. I like to go forward if I can. And there was nowhere else to really go that I hadn't been before. Is that where I found the bridge? It may be, but I don't think I crossed the bridge. So, so I decide to go up. I'm walking alongside the river, and there's, you know, not even five feet of space between the edge of the river and then where the hill starts. And I'm not going up the hill as much as I can. I have a little bit to go around trees and things like that. And it's this is a Georgia forest, so it is not clear. And I decide to go up the hill which was a really bad idea in hindsight. There's not a place to walk. It is not quite straight up, but there were points where I'm on my hands and knees climbing. I fell. I did not fall back, thankfully. I'm terrified of heights, and that would have been really bad. That was constant. That's why I am hunched over, gripping whatever I can while carrying. Oh camera and a tripod. I don't remember which lens I would have had at that point. Probably the Tamron. Uh, yeah, probably the Tamron. I was looking for wildlife, looking for birds, of course. Did not see anything that I remember. I wrote a blog post about it. I don't remember if I talked about falling. But at one point I slipped. And... I'm going uphill, and I slipped, and I start scrambling, and I managed to grab onto something and stop me, because now I'm backsliding down the hill. Camera dropped. Pretty much everything did. And it all went straight down. Thankfully, the camera was fine. I don't even remember if there was any noticeable damage, probably because I was already putting it... If I had to guess, I would have been putting it down, find something to grab onto, haul myself up a little bit. I would not do that now. Not nearly. I know... I didn't... I didn't really go out into nature as a kid. I didn't learn that as a kid. I'm learning that as an adult. Because we did not have a lot of that kind of outside stuff. We did a little bit. There were some forest areas. Forested areas is not huge around our house. But we didn't really go play in them. Because we were told not to. It was dangerous. So the most that I really did was I was a teenager and I would go over to a friend's house and we would go running around in his back area uh, playing airsoft a group of us and then when you get done and you get bored with that you're just wandering around in a it's small forest area it's not that big it was probably there was a little creek maybe 
I don't know, a couple hundred feet across, something like that. And it was just like between houses, like the backs of his neighborhood and then the next neighborhood over. It was just this creek that was down there. And I remember we would, we would run around down there and I was always out of breath. I don't run very well. But I do remember us playing and me not like the, the older, I mean, we're, oh gosh, 15, 16, probably somewhere in that age. And not quite fully grown, but basically fully grown boys. And there was a vine and this vine is 40, 50 feet long coming off the tops of trees. And this, this valley little hill in the backyard laid down to the water and then back up. So we were constantly having to go up and down, which was annoying. But if you get the vine and you walk it up backwards and you grab it and you jump up a little bit, you can swing out and then come back. I never did that. Again, afraid of heights. I watched. I, I, I said, all right, well, I'll get your parents if somebody gets hurt. And I watched. I had absolutely zero interest in doing that. But they did. And one, there were more than one vine. And one of them did break at one point, but thankfully nobody was on it at the point at that time. Plus, I was much heavier than pretty much everybody there. So I had no doubt that if I'd gotten on the vine, it would have been worse. But that really is the full extent of like romping through the woods, doing, doing dumb kid stuff trying to see if you can just climb things. I didn't really try to climb things because I did not like being off the ground. I, I would get that afraid of heights feeling in my stomach just looking down the hill, and I still do most hills. I don't like being up high. But that was real stupid of me to just press on. That was very stubborn of me to to just go i will i will scale this hill this mostly vertical <laughs> climb up i can probably do it i remember the reason this is all related is because i specifically remember going all right well this is slightly steeper than the hills that we would climb in his backyard my friend so i could probably do that and there were points if you wanted to get back up to the house where you had to kind of hands and knees crawl or you had to run and running was more dangerous I did not run very often because I did not like that feeling of being up and having to lean forward because I know if I lean back, there's nothing but just downhill from there. And that's why I did not like... Um, still wet in the middle. I did not like doing that. I did not like climbing uphill like that. And when I, when I started to fall, go backwards a little bit and then you throw yourself forwards. <laughs> Slam into the ground. Thankfully, everything was fine, and I learned a lesson. Don't, don't go up steep hills like that. Find a safer way to do it. It's not worth it. If I'd fallen, nobody, I, I mean, my significant other knew where I was more or less. Um, probably. We've gotten better about that now, making sure that somebody knows where I have gone. In case something like that happens. A general idea since may have been I don't remember if I told her I was going up to that forest or not but certainly not like I park here I walk here I do this because I don't know those things ahead of time either it's more of a decision made in the moment I get there and go which way am I going today Halfway there. So the second instance that I can think of, I can't I just recall, I don't think there was anything in Wyoming or here. Well, I did walk off a bridge a few weeks ago, but I was fine. I landed in snow. There was snow everywhere. That would have been bad if I twisted something or fallen on something, but it also, not very far into the park, I would have been able to limp back, it was popular, and my significant other knows exactly where I go now. <laughs> but there was a time where I was trying to do different things for 
photography. Back in Georgia, another lesson I needed to learn. I, I'd been going to a few different places, trying to expand out, trying to find different things. Wildlife mostly, but also cool landscapes to take pictures of. And I went to a park that I'd been to a few times before. And this park had kind of a few different areas. There was a big lake on one side and then walking trails in the middle that took you up the hill so you could see everything. <sighs> Just remembering now. The lake, the few times that I, I'd gone there a few times because I was like, oh, this is, it's big enough. There's a lot of people. It's very popular, but it's big enough. I might be able to see stuff. And the, the lake side of it, very still water. And they had, uh, I mean, it was a, it was a public park and there was a, a shop there at the park that rented paddle boats uh maybe canoes or kayaks things like that and to me when possible i don't want to spend my money renting something if i can buy it now, i cannot afford a kayak a paddle boat very expensive things like that but I was interested. And so I got an inflatable raft. But I didn't go to the lake. And I cannot tell you why I did not go to the lake. <laughs> if I'd gone to the lake, the story would have been very different. On the, uh, on the other side of the park, on the other side of the walking trails was a dam. This was a park nature area that also was a part of the uh, electric companies property i don't know how they i don't know the the rules of how they uh how they shared one to the other but there was a dam and it was quite fast and i've been there a few times and take pictures at the dam and walked as far as i could along the river and this is a big river this is a main river is it the chattahoochee it may be Chattahoochee is a big, big river that runs through most of Georgia. There was plenty of times where I'd be like, oh, I'm here. This is water. This is the Chattahoochee. And then I'd go many miles in another place and stop at the river and go, still the Chattahoochee. <laughs> but this is where the dam is. I don't know if there's multiple dams. I, there's definitely multiple dams because some of them come from Lake Lanier. Is that, that's not the Chattahoochee, is it? It might. Anyway. The point is I went to the dam side because that's where there's a boat launch. And I'd seen people go kayaking and whatnot. And I figured, all right, how do I get to see more? How do I get closer to the birds? I don't have the, I might not even have the Tamron at this point for a, like a big lens. I may have just been using, uh, I don't remember. I'd have to look. I, I definitely, I would write blogs about these and I did not think to look them up beforehand to have more of that information. So I apologize. That would have been better to have, but <sighs> my thought process was go get on the water and just gently float along and take pictures from the boat, the raft. Here's the thing. I'd never done that before. Never been on watercraft of pretty much any kind. <sighs> and here I am on an inflatable raft. Now, I was at least smart enough to have a life vest. I wanted to take the necessary precautions and not... I think I put everything in one bag for my camera in case it dropped in the water. Now, most of the, the camera stuff that I had was water sealed anyway or weather resistant. So I'm not going dunking it underwater, but it'd probably be okay if a splash got on it. So that's why I thought this will be fine. I'll be able to float down the river and do that. But I didn't, no, I did not consider floating down the river. My plan was just to kind of stay around there in the dam because there were plenty of geese on the other side, far away from people where they're fishing. <sighs> 
here's the thing about a dam. The water flows from it really quickly, making a very fast current. I should have gone to the lake. I should have gone to the still lake. <laughs> but I had to learn that lesson, apparently. You would think, and logically, I know... Uh, stretching this. Um, I know water fast. I've been... Had I been... I was doing some fishing stuff, things I don't do anymore, but I had done that and I'd waited out in the middle of the river somewhere else, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember exactly what time it was, but I just... or what when that timeline is. No, I was doing fishing stuff before. That was one of the hobbies that I went, ooh, I could get into this, and then gave up before I started doing photography stuff. So I get in the raft. I try to get everything there. And by I get in the raft, I mean I start taking it down, and somebody else is there getting ready with their kayaks. They're like, oh, how far are you going? And I go, oh, not very. I'm just going to stay around this area. And they went, okay. <laughs> they should have stopped me. <laughs> I didn't say anything else, do anything else. I look, I mean, I'm a fully grown adult. I should know better. <laughs> should have warned me about that. Told me to go to the still lake and not the rushing river. I put it in and it starts going. Just the raft and the thing. And so I'm holding it. I've got one, one oar. Did it come with two? I think it came with two. It was our inflatable raft with two oars. And it, I, I have to like try to balance it and try to get in it while the water's going and put everything and have the camera bag and I about capsize it, tip over. And then I finally get in it and I'm just trying to get myself situated and get under control. And I am flying down the river <laughs> much, much faster than I thought. So about the blink of an eye, I've probably gone several hundred feet while I'm panicking, trying to get the boat under control, trying not to flip over, trying not to drop my camera bag in the river where I will never see it again. I don't get that far. I mean, it's a couple hundred feet, right? And that's about it. And I immediately went, this is a bad idea. This is dangerous. I, I might not drown, but I would either wind up hurt or much further down than I planned on going, and no way to get back. I'm fine. <laughs> I did. I remember trying to fight against the current, and that doesn't do anything. <laughs> that was not going to work in an inflatable raft, barely big enough for me. I think it was technically supposed to be a two-person raft, but two very small people. One me. Oh, boy. That was a... That was a lesson to learn. I get it further down. Or I am further down. I have no control at this point, and that's why. When I lost the control, I realized this could go very wrong very fast. And that's when it was time to call it. I, I think I just got out. I don't remember. Oh, no. No, no, no. I was able to kind of use the oars to just kind of guide me towards one of the edges. And I get over there and I reach out and grab a branch or a tree or something like that. And I kind of pull myself to the shore. And then I'm just, <laughs> I'm in a raft, gripping to the grass on the side of it. Anything I can get my hands on, just panting. <laughs> and I take my camera bag and I put it up on the shore and I go, okay, well... There's that, and there's nothing in my pockets. I think I took my keys and my phone and things like that and put them in the bag before I did that. So at that point, it's fine. And now I have to get out of the raft and to... Oh, it's probably waist-high water. Again, rushing very quickly. Boat flips over. Raft flips over. I lose one of the oars. No, I lose one of the holders for the oars. It may have just been one oar that was double-sided. I bet it was. I bet that's what it was. But it had um, it had little U-shaped plastic bits on each side for the oar to rest in. I'm sure there's a term for that. I don't know. I don't do boat stuff, as is probably very apparent by this story. 
So I lose one of those. That's gone forever, unfortunately. Um, and I, I flip over, I get out, I'm soaking wet. I pull the, pull the raft up and just sit for a while and think about how stupid that was. And then I, un <laughs> I know that that guy's back there waiting, getting his boats and stuff ready, you know, his kayaks and everything. I believe he was meeting up with people. And so he was the first one there and getting everything ready. And I don't want to go back there less than 10 minutes after and be like, well, that was a mistake. So I sit there for a while and then I find I have to go uphill again <coughs> from the river uphill to get to there. But then I find that I actually can kind of follow, not necessarily a trail, but follow along to get back to the parking lot. But I deflate everything. I deflate the raft. I break everything down. I make it as small as possible first so that I can just immediately, and that's exactly what I did. I was rather embarrassed. So I grabbed all my stuff and immediately put it in the car and then drove away. <laughs> I don't remember where I went that day. But that could have gone really, really bad, right? If I hadn't been able to pull off to the side there, I would have been much further down the river. The water was way faster when you get in it than it looks as you're, as you're looking at it. This was all still photography at the time. I was not doing any video stuff. I would just go out, take pictures and come back, write about them and post the pictures. So I will have to, uh, to look at what else happened that day. If anything, I may have, I may have never told the story. I'm sure I did because I felt like being honest and hopefully if there's anyone else out there who goes, well, I've never been on a water craft. Now's the perfect time to try and start. Let me, let me get a cheap inflatable raft, the cheapest possible option. Let me not do any training for it. Let me just try and get in. And also let me make sure that I bring expensive camera stuff with me. <sighs> Lesson learned. I have been on watercraft since then. I have not been in an inflatable raft since then, but you're talking, it's probably four years ago at this point. It was probably summer of 2019, if I had to guess, because I think I started doing photo stuff in 2018. Well, we talked about that last time, so I don't need to guess because I'd be wrong. I don't remember everything. Anyway, that could have, that could have been very dangerous. Yes, I had a life vest. I probably would have been okay, but I could have wound up hurt. I could have lost my equipment because I was impatient and didn't think about it. Is this thing not going anymore? Did you turn off? No, oh, I think you did. Well, then that's that. Plus, it's been more than 20 minutes. It bounces back. We got some nice gluten development here. It has come together. I would be able to show you. Oh, there we go. It is going. Okay. It did start over, but here we go. Here's the final product. Let's see if I can shape it into something a little bit. It's not as smooth as I like to see, but I haven't really been paying attention. Usually I watch it and I, I do different kneading to get it to the point where it's fully smooth, but it's pretty there. It bounces back. Bread. Now it will sit in the fridge first because you have to kind of slow the rising process because of how high up you are in altitude. And then it'll sit on the counter and then I'll shape it and then it sits again. It's, it's like an hour in the fridge, an hour on the counter, an hour after being shaped or maybe two hours after being shaped. I'll need to check the recipe. At this point, I'm just kind of winging it every time, but it'll make pretty good amount of basically dinner roll sized bread. That's the best one that I can do. I don't have a loaf pan. I can't make it into an actual like sandwich loaf. I'd like to, but I don't own a loaf pan at this point in time. So I either make baguettes or just into little rolls and the rolls work well when I'm, I just need one with my dinner or something like that. And you can make a sandwich out of it. Of course, uh, I've done that. I've used it basically as a burger bun or on, uh, I've got, 
plant-based chicken patties. Anyway, that's it. That was as close as I've uh, come to danger, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of anything else over the last year or two. Getting, getting my car stuck isn't that dangerous. Uh, that didn't really happen, but there was a moment of panic twice now. Once in the snow, once in the sand. I learned from those experiences, though. I learned where I can take my car and where I can't, even though it's four-wheel drive. It's not off-road. Good stuff. Anyway, that was the question for today. That's as far at this point in time, April something, 2023, as close as I've come to danger. And I've been out hundreds of times, if not more. At, at least multiple hundreds over the last few years of doing this. I don't try to take risks. I don't try to do things too dangerous. And once I have done something that I've realized is dangerous, I don't ever do it again. <laughs> I learn what it takes to be on a boat and take pictures and have a camera. You learn how it works. You get the experience first without the camera there, and then you go back and do it. It's a much better way of doing it. Oh, wow, that softened up real good after I gave it a minute. There we go. All right, bread. Bread, personal story, close to danger. Uh, try to remember to post in the comments a link to that blog post where I talk about both of those days, probably, if I did. I'll look back and see when I edit this. And then uh, next time, we'll have a different question, probably. Uh, you can also ask a question if you want. So we had somebody last time who asked a question and I answered it while playing Minecraft. Next time I'll probably go back to playing Minecraft instead of making bread because I do not need to do this more than maybe twice a month. Depending on how much we eat and if we plan meals that require bread, it's about a little more than two weeks worth. This is going to be good.